Sophia lived a normal life. She was a marathon runner and an avid gardener and maintained a healthy lifestyle. But one day, Sophia comes down with the flu. When I got the flu, it wiped me out for a week. I was having aches all over my body. I had a fever. The doctor prescribed me some antiviral drugs and I started to feel a little bit better when I took them. Sophia eventually begins to recover from the flu, but continues to experience some symptoms. The doctor prescribed Sophia another round of antiviral drugs and told her to rest and drink plenty of fluids. We were supposed to go for a run one day, but she called me and told me that she was having trouble moving. At first I thought she was just blowing me off, but then I was like, that's not like Sophia at all. She's anaceous, but on the other hand, her sickness is getting a little too petrical for me. This whole thing is just gentacular. I was told that if I participated, I would get a venti half whole milk, one quarter, one percent, one quarter non-fat, extra hot split quad shot foot, no foam latte with whip, two packets of Splenda, one sugar in the raw, a touch of vanilla syrup, and three short sprinkles of cinnamon. The doctor told me that I probably just needed more time to recover. He gave me another round of drugs, and after I started taking them, I felt like I was getting better. I could finally move without having horrible aches and stiffness. I felt like I had made a full recovery, and I was feeling great. But it started to become harder to do things. I was feeling stiffness around my neck and my back. My hips and shoulders would ache. I would try to stretch it out, but it would just come back a few minutes later. It was even worse when I sat down to watch TV or when I woke up in the morning. I would try to get up, but it just became too difficult. I would have to slowly start moving, stretching my legs and arms before I could even get off the bed. I decided it was time to schedule an appointment with a new doctor. Sophia came to me complaining of aches and stiffness around her neck and her back. I ran some tests and I noticed that Sophia had an unusually high erythrocyte sedimentation rate and C-reactive protein in her blood. These tests are used to detect inflammation. Women normally have a higher erythrocyte sedimentation rate than men and taking oral contraceptives or vitamin A can actually increase your ESR levels. C-reactive protein is produced by the liver and it ele elevated levels also indicate inflammation. But neither of these tests tell us the cause of the inflammation. I ruled out arthritis and although she had an elevated ESR, she did not have high levels of other proteins like rheumatoid factor that would indicate that she had rheumatoid arthritis. After consulting with colleagues, the doctor determines that Sophia may have polymyalgia rheumatica. Polymyalgia rheumatica is a complicating disease. It's difficult to diagnose because the symptoms are similar to arthritis. The cause is not yet known, but there tends to be inflammation around the bursae or the sacs of the hips. So aches typically start at the hips and shoulders and spread to the muscles of the neck, back, and thighs. I decided to start Sophia on a round of low-dose corticosteroids, specifically prednisone, to see if that would relieve some of her symptoms. Sophia starts to take the prednisone and the aches and the stiffness subside. She now resumes her active lifestyle and continues to take the prednisone, but at much lower doses. <laughs> Sophia starts to take the prednisone and the aches and the stiffness subside. She now resumes her active lifestyle and continues to take the prednisone, but at much lower doses. <laughs>